Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're checking out another Ultrabook. This time it's from the guys over at Lenovo. So it's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, and this one's coming with the i5-6300U CPU. So we'll jump straight into it then with the design, and as you can see straight away, this is everything an Ultrabook should be, nice and uh, thin, small dimensions, nice and light, so I really like that. Um, you can also tell who it's aimed for once you open it up with its very, very conservative, uh, understated design. So this is really aimed at uh, the business professionals, you know, office workers and students that are wanting a premium built uh, Ultrabook, but don't want it to be too flashy like many of the other ones we test um, that are just too out there and they want something that's going to be uh, look nice but in a very conservative way um, so that's really good it's stacked with some premium materials being made out of aluminium magnesium and carbon fiber which i really like also so that's uh, really good and uh, just design wise i really like it i have no problems with an understated design i know exactly who it's appealing to and with all those good materials um, it's coming with an extremely good build quality and that's also reflected in the price as we'll talk about a bit later on. So looking around at I.O. we see there's nothing on the front there. Over on the left hand side we see a USB 3.0 port, mini display port. This weird looking one there is the Lenovo One Link Plus connector which is for things like Ethernet and 4K video out. Then we see the AC input which is a bit stranger than the ones we normally used to. Around the back there we see a slot for your SIM card but also an SD card if you want to quickly take say photos of a camera or something like that you can just slide it straight in. Then on the right hand side we have the secure lock, HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports and your standard 3.5 millimeter jack. So specs wise we're seeing it's pretty standard as far as an Ultrabook goes coming with the Intel i5-6300U CPU that's a 14 nanometer dual core CPU with hyper threading which means it'll have four threads with a 2.4 gigahertz base clock but it'll turbo all the way up to 3 gigahertz that's pretty reasonable and it's coming with a 15 watt TDP graphics wise this is coming with uh, the built-in integrated graphics so Intel HD graphics 520 that should be good enough to get you by for all your needs as far as media goes and maybe some light gaming but we'll talk about that a little bit later and on the RAM side of things we're seeing that it comes with 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3L which is the low voltage memory. Moving on to the display and it's coming with a 14 inch 2560 by 1440p IPS display. So that's uh, really good, it's you know, going to have pretty epic uh, pixel density, however it's also going to need quite a bit of scaling which is handled by Windows 10 quite nicely so that's uh, quite good. But yeah, as far as the actual display goes, uh, very very sharp as you would expect, looks really really nice, great color saturation being IPS and also great viewing angles. Um, however, one random thing I did notice with it is that it comes with a decent amount of glare when you're trying to use it, um, say outside or something like that, or in a room with lots of big windows. Uh, you do notice there's a decent amount of glare. I don't know what it is. It must be some of the covering on the display. Um, but yeah, there just seems to be quite a bit of glare. The other thing I noticed, and this sort of adds to it, is that it doesn't go exceptionally bright, even maxed out. It's decent, but I would have liked it to be able to go a little bit brighter because I, when I was using it, I pretty much had it on maxed out or near maxed out brightness pretty much all the time to compensate for that. Soundwise is coming with two one watt speakers. So these actually do a pretty decent job. Quite good quality, quite good bass. They should get you by for all your audio needs. However, they're on the base, so that means if you're using it on your lap or on a soft surface, then they can get quite muffled. However, if you're using it on a desk, you should be just fine. But yeah, I thought they were pretty good for uh, watching movies, listening to music. I had no problems with it at all. I watched two movies on this, and the sound quality was just fine for watching them. So yeah, um, pretty decent. Probably one of the best Ultrabooks I've ever tested in terms of audio quality. Keyboard wise, I was very, very impressed also. So um, Ultrabooks have generally worse keyboards than standard laptops and especially gaming laptops. But um, this one was very, very surprising in that it actually had a fantastic keyboard. Uh, so the layout was pretty standard for the most part. You have all your function keys up on the F keys. I would have liked some of the main ones down on the arrow keys, but that's just a personal preference of mine. Otherwise, the keyboard is pretty standard of what you'll see on pretty much every Ultrabook. 
Now the keyboard feel itself is fantastic. It's just terrific. It has really good travel. It's really easy and uh, nice to type on. And you'll be able to type documents on this with no worries at all. It was really, really good. I was extremely impressed by the keyboard on this Ultrabook. It's the best one I've ever tested on Ultrabook, just straight away. I can say that um, out of all the other ones I've tested, this one is definitely the best and very impressive given that it has a, a short travel, but it, it has a very nice feel to it. So um, I really did like the keyboard on this. The touchpad, on the other hand, I wasn't the biggest fan of. Now it does come with a track point, which I don't really like. Uh, some people out there might like it, but I'm not the biggest fan of them. But I, it's there if you want it to. Pretty much no one else uses them anymore. I remember when they used to be a big thing, like nine years ago, but yeah, not anymore. Um, yeah, so the touchpad itself though is, is decent. I mean, it'll get you by. The main issue I had with it is that it's quite unpredictable and it's quite inaccurate. I think this is because it's a 14 inch 1440p display and it feels like they've had to turn up the sensitivity to compensate for that. So I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Um, it just felt a little bit off, especially when you would be scrolling, it would kind of go at a similar pace and then all of a sudden would just accelerate. So there was issues there. Um, but as far as the clicking goes and everything else, it was just fine and the gestures seem to work okay. So it's just okay in my book. It's not good, but it's not that bad either. It's just okay. So performance wise, it does a really good job. I mean, this isn't a gaming laptop, so obviously I didn't test it with all the games like I usually would in my gaming laptop reviews. Um, but as far as just casual, normal stuff you would be using this for, you know, watching media, all of that type thing, opening up applications, uh, it does it very easily, very fast, very well. So it's gonna be absolutely fine for all of your casual needs or your media needs and that. It's just gonna motor through it, no worries at all. Now, if you are looking to do a little bit of gaming, um, it still will get you by, you know, okay. So in a, a low requirement game like League of Legends, you're gonna be seeing about 70 fr 75 frames per second average um, and that's on a medium to high setting. So that's enough to get you by. Uh, that's at 1080p, by the way, not at 1440p. And in the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility benchmark, it scored 513 marks, which is, you know, decent. Uh, that, that's enough to get you by. So it's going to be fine for low requirement games and uh, all your casual stuff. So that's pretty much what it needed to do, and it does it very well. So it has pretty good performance for what it is, but what about heat and noise? So as always, I'll bring up the laptop triangle. On one side of the triangle, you have heat and noise. On another side, you have performance. And on the final side, you have size or dimensions. And I say you get to pick two of these things. So obviously, it's got the dimensions, um, but it does lack in the performance area, which means it's going to have good heat and noise. So yeah, in the Intel Extreme Tune Utility benchmark, it only went up to 77 degrees on that i5 CPU, which is, you know, that's just fine. That's during a stress test, so you're never going to see it that high for anything you're going to be doing on it. So that was really good. Um, it, apps, it makes no noise whatsoever, and the laptop itself doesn't get hot at all. Uh, so it's very impressive there, very quiet, even when you're, you know, watching movies and watching 1080p content, there's absolutely no noise at all. So in terms of heat and noise, it does excellently, uh, very, very good in this area. Battery life wise, it does only okay as far as Ultrabooks go. So with my use, I saw between four to six hours and my use might be a bit more intense than other people's out there in terms of the screen brightness I run and all those other things. So it's gonna depend on the user. If you're quite a conservative user and you have it on say a battery saver type mode and you have the screen brightness down and you're only say typing a document on it, not browsing the web and doing other things like that, then you'll probably see up over seven hours of battery life. But for someone like me, I uh, using it with quite high brightness and browsing the web, I was seeing about five hours on average, give or take one hour either way, depending on what I was actually doing with it. So that should give you a general idea on the battery life out of this Ultrabook. Software wise, it's coming with quite a bit of Lenovo 
blowware, how you can get rid of it if it doesn't interest you or you don't think you'll use it. However, there's one piece of software from Lenovo that I would recommend on keeping, and that is the Lenovo Solution Center, which I thought is absolutely terrific. It's very, very useful. It gives you a good idea on what's going on with your hardware, and it gives you reports, and it's just really, really handy software to have. I really did enjoy it. It's actually one of the best pre-installed uh, softwares I've ever used on all the laptops I've ever tested since I started testing them. So a uh, really good job there Lenovo. I think you should um, keep upgrading it and making the solution center better and better because it is an extremely useful software. Which brings us now to the conclusion and what do I make of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon? So as far as the design goes, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Very understated design, looks really nice, going to be great in an office or for a business professional or anyone like that that doesn't want a laptop that's going to stand out too much. And it's also stacked with premium materials, which I also like. Gives it a really, really nice build quality. Now the screen is fantastic. Its color reproduction is phenomenal. It looks really good being 1440p IPS and 14 inch gives you insane pixel density and I just thought it was a really really good display however I would like a better anti-glare uh, like screen cover on it uh, like coating I think that would make it a lot better and I would have liked the brightness to be a tad higher sound quality is very impressive for an ultrabook uh, very good uh, bass quality just the sound quality in general is really good I just would have liked the speakers to be on the top and then it would have been perfect but yeah sound quality one of the best I've ever heard out of an ultrabook the keyboard is superb you're gonna be able to type up documents very easily it's really really nice to use and just a fantastic keyboard however the touchpad leaves a lot to be desired and that it is a bit unpredictable and I thought it could be a little bit better Performance wise it does decent. It's going to be able to get you through for everything you're going to want an ultrabook to be doing and for gaming you'll be able to do some low requirement games but for all your media stuff it's going to be just fine and heat and noise wise it's completely quiet uh, so that's really good. No noise and it doesn't get too hot as far as ultrabooks go 77 degrees in our uh, benchmark that's pretty reasonable i would say and from testing it and having it on my lap and that it doesn't really get hot at all so it does very good in terms of heat and noise battery life is only okay as far as ultrabooks go now if you're a very conservative user it's still going to be just fine however if you're a bit more of a power user like me um, you might chug through the battery in about five hours, but I think it should be enough for most people to get through what they need it for. Now, the big problem I think with this is the price. It's kind of hard for me to justify it, even though I've said all those things about it being very good. It's coming in at three and a half thousand New Zealand dollars at Playtech. That is a very, very high price tag for an Ultrabook, especially when you compare it to things like the Zenbook, which is extremely popular and coming in at, you know, more than half the price in some cases. Um, less than half the price, I should say. So yeah, there's, there's that which really does pull it down. The fact it's just way, way, way too expensive. They really, really need to bring the price down on it. But price aside, if you're looking for an Ultrabook that just does everything and does it really well, then I would still have a look at it. However, if you're someone that's more worried about money, then I would say still maybe look at it, but also have a real good look at the Zenbooks first because they are much cheaper and they're still an excellent Ultrabook. So that's maybe where I would look first before maybe looking at the X1 Carbon. Now, thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.